Hello, how's it going? I hope you're doing well and that you're having an awesome day today. I cannot believe it is time to post the end of the hashtag it's been emotional project pan. I think this is like the longest project pan I've ever done seasonally. It was started by Liz. We know her as Kiki Pans from Instagram. It's been a fun roller coaster, certainly. Um, we started this challenge back in March, just jumping in and picking things that we associated with different emotions from our makeup collections. And so now it's been quite a bit of time, March to September. I was able to um, meet my goals on the majority of my products, if not exceed them. So I'm really excited to kind of go through. In fact, I had to watch my um, initial video to kind of really go back and see where my mindset kind of was. So if you're interested to see that first video, I will go on and link it up here in the card above and also put a link in the description box below just so you can see kind of the emotions that I chose. Um, or if you want to see where I started with the products, I'm going to do my best to insert some pictures, um, especially with the eyeshadows and things so you can kind of see the progression um, from, like I said, I've been working on these products from March into September. They've been rolled over into makeup bags. So Time and time again, I've reached for these things. They've been tried and true. A lot of them have become favorites in my collection. So without further ado, let's do it. So the very first emotion that I chose was anticipation. And the product that I chose was my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. This is a product that I adore. And then I go through an apathy time period and then I go back to kind of, okay, I'm, I'm good with it. And then I go back to loving it. And I fortunately ended on a very high note with this product, but I did officially finish it. It is my very first MAC paint pot to ever completely get through. This was a long, long time coming. I feel very accomplished for being able to use this. I enjoyed it. Um, I went through my ups and downs with it, but I stuck it out and this is incredible um, to be able to officially finish this and be able to toss it in the back to Mac bag. I believe that I finished it. I want to say it was August maybe even the end of July. It's been no, I think it was August because since then I've been working on my Milani um, eyeshadow primer and I'm really enjoying it just kind of switching things up but I have to admit I really did enjoy this product so hooray first thing done the anticipation can be over but it was it was quite a, a an amazing fascinating um, process of seeing how my perspective constantly went from one extreme to another and that's going to be interesting you know should I decide to purchase that again in the future um, how I would feel about it then. But for now, I'm going to definitely work through the Milani eyeshadow primer. Then the next thing, how appropriate, my next emotion that I chose was annoyance. And the product that I chose for that was the Fizz and Bubble Watermelon Scrub. Not going to lie, I'm still at the same exact place. However, I was thinking about it um, as I got ready to film this video. For all the struggle that I've had getting myself motivated to use it, I think that I chose the wrong time of year to pick a lip scrub. Um, you know, because being in March, the weather already gets really, really warm here in, in Texas, and I'm not going to be reaching for a lip scrub when it's warmer because I'm wearing lighter shades of lipstick. I'm wearing creamier shades of lipstick. I don't necessarily have to deal with the dry skin. And so going from March to September, I really think I chose an inopportune time to bring out this product because now that we're getting into fall and winter, it's still hot as hell here, but you know, now that we're getting into fall and winter, I feel like with more matte lip products, I'm definitely wearing darker lip products. I, I see the merit to having this. I don't know if I'm going to ever toss it into another Project Pan again, but I think that I'm actually going to be in a, a season where I'm encouraged to use it and it's not going to be such a burden um, or, you know, quite as an annoyance to kind of see this, but literally, I mean, no progress, none. <laughs> Cause I just, I, I couldn't be bothered. I, I will, I will be very blunt to say this is the one time in a project that I've really just looked at something and been like, no, just no. So that was kind of a, you know, it, it happens to me too. Not every, not every project is just like, completely a, a success out of the gate. Sometimes there's a little bit of a learning curve. Sometimes there is generally realizing that things just don't work. 
and maybe they don't have a place in your collection and that's one of those products that I'm kind of figuring out for myself it's just it's it's got its place in the time of year but the time of year that I chose it wasn't working so we're gonna roll with it all right emotion number three I picked was distraction and I chose two quads from Mac from specifically the Mariah Carey collection that came out several years ago and my intention was to definitely make progress as much as I could. I only used this one a couple of times because I just wasn't really into the cool tone shadows when I chose this back in March. Um, but I have a sneaky suspicion that if I'm correct, that I think that cool tone eyeshadow palettes and trends are going to be really game on for next year. I definitely think that I'll get more use out of this then. But the other thing that was kind of holding me back is this shade right here. Um, I'm not sure specifically what the shade name is, but um, it kind of looks like antiqued. And I'm just, I'm really over that shade from painting it in various shade names from different neutral palettes. And so that really kind of turned me off to this palette, to be very honest with you. Um, so we'll see next year if I'm ready to kind of embrace that shadow again. In fact, that's the shade that's holding me back from finishing my Lorac Mega Pro 2, or Lorac Mega Pro palette, because there is a shade that, again, is very similar to this shade, and I'm kind of like, oh, you know, another one, another one. After, you know, painting Amaretto from the Chocolate Bar and um, uh, Garnet and Sunset from Stila and... Toasted was more like a taupey version, bronzy, but kind of along the same vein, so I'm just over it. However, I am happy to report that I made a lot of progress on this quad, and I'm that chick you like. I've been going through with this matte espresso brown for months now. I've been using it to fill in my brows. Um, if I wore a brown liner, I'd use it to set the liner. I'm not really a huge fan of using it as an eyeshadow because it's just, it's a little too dry. And I think it's because it's been sitting in my collection for a while. I am going to try it again because in October, I'm really going to go back to a smoky red look that I wore earlier this year. And I'm going to, you know, see if I can like go for it and try to finish my first MAC shadow. I've never finished one um, in my entire makeup wearing days, but now's the time to go on and attack it. And I've also made a ton of progress. In fact, I hit pan today in this beautiful gold shade. And I have to tell you, I've, I've really fallen in love with this particular gold. It is quite similar to light bronze if you have the Lorac Pro palette which is one of my favorite golds of all time. This really isn't gonna come across on camera like I want it to, but it's just, it's beautiful. It's brightening, it's, um, it's not too warm, but it's not too cool. It works with really warm toned eyeshadows. It works with really cool toned eyeshadows. I have it kind of with a rosy vibe today. It's just a lovely, lovely shadow, and so, I've really enjoyed reaching for this on an everyday basis and I feel like I've surpassed my goals because like I said when I initially threw this into the challenge I wanted to just make progress but the fact that I was able to hit pan on two shades is incredible. Um, and my favorite way actually to wear this gold shade is to layer it on top of the NYX Jumbo Eyeshadow Pencil in the shade Cashmere. The two of those is just so brightening and stunning. It's actually the combo that I've got going on on my lids. I love it. I love, love reaching for that on an everyday basis. So I'm, I'm thrilled that I threw that into this challenge because it was a shadow that I really just didn't um, know how I felt about it. I knew I wanted a backup gold because when I finished Legend out of my Kat Von D palette or Paint That Palette, it was the perfect substitution to just go on and, and continue kind of working with the other shades that I used with Legend. And I love it. Absolutely love, love that shade. So goal made on that one. Then we go into product number four, which was for acceptance. And I chose my Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. Um, as you know, from watching the previous updates, I was able to finish that powder and I have since replaced it with um, a Franken bronzer that I've made from Old Bare Mineral Shadows. In fact, that takes me into another product that I threw into this challenge. It was the Bare Minerals Clear Radiance um, all over uh, I guess you could call it a, a face powder, kind of a highlighting shade. I didn't like it on its own, but mixed in with these other warm tone shadows, I love it as a bronzer. I've been wearing this for quite some time. I mean, ever since I finished that Laura Mercier powder, um, I went on and mixed this up because I finished that Becca Gradient Glow Bronzer and I wanted to recreate it 
and move out quite a bit of older shadows from my collection. So um, you're going to be seeing this packaging for quite some time because I do have a lot of product in here, but this was another thing that I was able to move out of my collection since I had a lot of loose powders. It was kind of getting a little bit overwhelming to me. Now I think I only have a couple of powders because I've got a Wet n Wild Press Powder, a Clarins Powder, um, and then uh, I did buy the Too Faced Peachy um, or peach powder because I really want to wear that in October with that warm smoky red look and try it out. So I'm not feeling as burdened with um, setting powders as I did months ago when I had quite a lot to get through because I thought that Laura Mercier powder was going to take me a lot longer than it did. So gold net on that one. And then we go into a number five. I chose the Emotion Vigilance and for that I put in the It Cosmetics Liner Love Black Gel Liner. I'll go on and put a picture of where it was at the beginning because I've made a lot of progress on this liner. Um, as you can see now I have cleared out um, a little bit more of the sides of the pan. That X has now been expanded to literally use up um, what's going on in the middle here. It's it's a liner that I did take a slight bit of a break um, just out of boredom when I switched to using Costa Riche for a while um, and I finished up a little bit of a sample liner from Lancome but I'm back to being very diligent. I'm using this every single day. I'm setting it with my Lorac Pro 2 Black matte black shade and I really really love it. I do enjoy this formula. It is very creamy. It is very um, smooth. It is very forgiving on the upper lash line because I know with my hooded eyes it is very easy for liners to look over the top. Um, it's very easy to accentuate crepiness on the eyes and this is a very very smooth formula but it is extremely pigmented. I love that about this particular product. I still set it because like I said with my hooded eyes, it doesn't matter how great a product is, I have transfer during the day. And so I do go on and set it just to give me a little bit more of that durability. But this is a really powerful liner. I would highly recommend this. Um, when it comes to gel liners, my two favorite in the entire world are this one and my other would be the MAC Fluid Line in Black Track. Those two are my absolute favorites of all time. I have tried drugstore versions to high-end versions of gel liners, but those two never, ever, ever fail me. So if you want to pick up something that is really going to last you a long time, this gives you more product volume than the MAC Black Track. And I think that this one is honestly even a little bit more forgiving because it, it stays creamy. I mean, I've had this for quite a while and it's still just as creamy as the day I bought it. So great, great product. Even though I do go through my times of where I'm like over washing the brush and all that, you know what I mean? So, all right. <clears throat> and then the next one I chose was Sadness, number six, and that is my Too Faced Sugar Pop Palette because I've gotten to the point where it's too old. Um, I definitely need to throw it out. So here's a picture. This is what the original shades kind of looked like in the palette. I had made some progress. And since March, this is what my palette looks like now. I was able to go through and finish off what was left of Rock Candy because when I finished um, the highlighting shades out of my Kat Von D palette, I went in and knocked it out. I also wore this peach shade. I got to the point where I hit pan as I wore that warm red look. I did make some Franken shadows over here, but I did have to toss um, one of them because the purple shade I had made with the um, uh, blackberry shade that was right here, but the blackberry shade was just too old. It got to the point where it just really ruined the texture of the Franken shadow. It worked out for like the first week or two, and after that, it went rapidly downhill. So I went on and took it out of the palette, and I also made a Franken shade. This is a pretty close dupe to NARS Orgasm. It's a couple of different shades. I mixed what was left of the coral that was up here, a little bit of the bubble gum that was down here, and then um, the pinkish shade swoon from my Kat Von D palette to make this orgasm shade. So I'm gonna go through and knock this out um, as we get into next year, but literally like the, the only shadow I'm really gonna use are going in with my Franken shades right here that I've used from the Kat Von D palette. And then I wanna see if I can really knock out and finish a good chunk of this. Um, by the end of October with that smoky red look. So that's kind of where I am with this palette. 
And then going into, um, oh, strawberry ice. That was the other one I wanted to talk about because I made this teal shade right here, which is really pretty. I haven't worn it as much because I really feel like it's kind of a summery color. And it's not really fitting what I want to do with my fall makeup. But I took the strawberry ice shadow because I couldn't get any pigmentation off of it. Um, while it was in that Too Faced pan, but I mixed it with several other Bare Mineral shades because I wanted to make a dupe um, to the Muse shade from my Kat Von D palette because I really adored that shade and I wanted to go on and continue having kind of a lilac -y purple. I love mixing this with a white um, eyeshadow. I'm currently using Strange from my Naked 3 palette. It's what I have going on in my inner corner on my brow bone and I also use this mixed with a white as a face highlight. It's very very similar to the Becca Prismatic Amethyst highlighter and again it gives me an opportunity to really go through and move out a lot of shadow from my collection. So bonus opportunity with that. And then the last one I have officially is my Naked 3 palette. I chose this for nostalgia um, because I really wanted to go through and recreate a look that I loved from the Lorac Pro days when I painted that palette. And so that's why I went through with this gold shade. And my original goal was just to hit pan and the shades limit and near. As you can see from this palette, I have far surpassed those goals. I've hit Pan and Limit and Nooner. I also wanted to make some progress. I talked about loving these shades down here to kind of make my um, alternatives to Pewter um, because that was another shade that I just adored from the Lorac Pro palette. I actually don't have a lot of backup kind of shades to mimic that. And so what I've done is I mix all three of these shades together. I tap my brush, you know, I go one, two, three, one more tap into mug shot and then I apply it into my crease area on both sides and then I'm following through with a matte black shadow in my outer corner. I adore, adore this look. It is very basic, it is very simple, but at the same time you can zhuzh it up. I've thrown a matte purple into my crease area to give it an edgier cool tone vibe to kind of just give me something different to look forward to since right now I'm a little bit over the warm trends, but I'm ready to kind of step back into it. It's just been a great um, kind of step away, but still give me a look that is very, very wearable and goes with most of the things that I'm currently choosing to wear on a daily basis. And so I am beyond thrilled with what I've been able to do. And I've been, you know, the, the happy, you know, what am I trying to say? I've been the happiest about seeing the progress in Strange. I mean, that's kind of a give me shade um, because going through highlighters for me is actually pretty simple because I tend to multitask my eyeshadow as my facial highlight as I go through. And so when I finished the Skull shade from my Kat Von D palette, I went into Strange. I've been mixing it with the Muse shade that was in there. Now I mix it with this purple and I really enjoy wearing this as a highlight on my eyes and my face on a daily basis. So we'll see if I can finish that actually by the end of this month because I am going to be doing a makeup bag recap. Um, kind of wearing this look for the next week until we get into the end of September. So I hope you'll stay on the lookout for that video as well just to kind of see how everything went with my makeup bag. And the last bonus item that I kind of had in because the, the, the lip scrub was such a bust. Let's get real. I threw in my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Mood Light, and I'm happy to report that I finished this as of yesterday. So another powder is done. Again, that's why I'm not, you know, feeling as overwhelmed with the amount of powders because between moving out the Laura Mercier and then this Hourglass Powder, I am feeling so accomplished in being able to move out some more makeup. This is a great, great feeling. I've had this powder for what? two, three years now. I used it as contour. I used it as a face powder because I've been combining it with the um, Becca First Light Priming um, Filter, Perfecting Filter. And so I kind of wanted a little bit of a brightening powder. And with having a little bit of a tan from the summer, this just worked really well as an all over face powder. I adored the effect. It made it super easy to reach for on an everyday basis. And now I can call it done. So this, this was a great, 
challenge. It was, it was long, it was a lot of hard work, but at the same time, I feel so good about what I was able to do and really clear out some space in my backup stash and in my everyday vanity. So I hope that you have just as much fun um, jumping into the project pans. I'm also going to include everybody else that jumped in to the hashtag. It's been emotional. I will link all their videos in the description box below. Thank you once again, Liz, for coming up with this idea. It really just was inspiring and motivating and <clears throat> as my voice cracks <laughs> and thought provoking. I, I really had a blast um, participating in this. So I don't know, I gotta see what's what's next um, in store to pan out of my collection. So um, I'm gonna continue using these items, like I said, for the rest of the month because they are in rotation with my makeup bag. So I hope you'll stay on the, the lookout for that makeup bag recap video. And then I also have um, a couple get ready with me's coming. So take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll be seeing you soon. See you later.